Me here, one of the brothers said, I don't know they want to turn here though. One turn here though. They pass this. So, so one turn here they bloom this. So, they. so when you turn here they reach, right down this so. I'm going to hear this brother said to the, say, to, to turn here they said, good on so. And when he said good on so, I don't know about, he come right, this, when he said to the town here, he come out, the town here to hear him. The town here to turn back from down the sun, come back up and so. And when he reach up and so, he tap and he build up bigger. And when I did that, so, I did many net see him here. So I said, Bella said, Rajas, he did come in. He said, and I did that many net see him here. I said, Bella and Boo run going here, so I stick the many net. And so he come out the boat there, so. When you come on the boat, yes or no? <laughs> me want to go in there, so but to the speed of me move up, man. <laughs> me couldn't go in there, so. That's why I run good on my house, so. I jump, me jump in on the shop. When I jump in on the shop down there, so now. Me here. Three of them in on the shop. Me here, the shop, they go so. Wuku duku, wuku duku. I'm a war on the, 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 the car on my car, so I'm a son of war on. Because you can't do take off the rooftop. I mean, you're the right post, because a woman who wants them to be a fire, the gas. I mean, so now, man, this guy looks serious. Brother, I force it, me have experience. It's terrible. Welcome to Crime Time News and Entertainment with a Buzz. Now, the video that you just watched is of a fisherman explaining his experience as it pertains to a tornado. Now, there's been a whole bunch of unusual weather occurrences in a Jamaica, in a Kingston, in a Linstead. I will speak about this at the end of this video. Now, the next thing that is popping in the news as a young man growing up in a Jamaica, Kingston, to be specific. Whenever you say anything to anybody and say, boy, you're lucky. The response that you would get is either lucky D-E-A-D -E or lucky they are prison. Well, people, in this case, these purses are these two youths that you see on the screen in other picture they are two of the luckiest sons of a b-i-t-c-h-e-s pamasa god earth these are the two youths that were saved in that special operation by ctac and the jcf in which a group of men seven to be specific went on some sides of attempted robbery mission of the beryllium However, it seems as if, well, it didn't seem as if, CETA got some sorts of intelligence, some sorts of information, and they intercepted, foiled the whole mission through some sorts of monkey wrench in the program. There is also a video accompanying this picture along with other videos that has been circulating all over social media. However, in this video, you could see the two lucky sons of a B-I-T-C-H-E-S sitting on the sidewalk in the custody of SeaTac and the rest of the Popo. Take a listen, take a look, and then I'll give my piece. Now when we see pictures and videos like this, Especially when we hear, say, seven of them went on a mission, four of them confirmed gone, one still battling for his life. Most Jamaicans are going to say, why SeaTac did not just take out any and every one of them? Well, people, this is the thing. When it comes to SeaTac, SeaTac works with the JC of Jamaica Constabulary Force. However, CTAC is an independent body. CTAC is more working with UK. So therefore, the policy as it pertains to human rights, as it pertains to arrests. Had this been just the JCF without CTAC, these two individuals would also be DEAD. However, when this started, the poor poor confronted them. I guess these two people were in a some sorts of store. They came back out, going to the car, the vehicle, or one of those vehicles in which they were using when SeaTac and the JCF pounced up on them. So therefore, I am assuming that these two were the two lucky ones that were not in the vehicle. 
the other people try to take for themselves because they knew that they were armed and dangerous and they knew that either way if them get catch they were going to get that fresh 15 that is going to be jacked up because of the fact of some sorts of high powered rifle at least three of them are so so it seems as if they decide that it is damned if they do damned if they don't they are going to take their chances so them are going to drive it they're going to try run they're going to try swim it out people you and i know what the result were it did not end up too fortunate for those unfortunate souls luckily for jamaica now we realize that there are some videos circulating all over social media and based on what the poor poor the poor poor report is saying there was some sorts of s-h-o-o-t out now people these are the facts if the poor poor get intelligence that you're going on some sorts of mission especially when they've been investigating the series of takeaway in a Jamaica as it pertains to beryllium. Whenever them catch you, especially when they catch you red hand, red handed with a whole bunch of high powered rifle and other tool in the vehicle, more than likely DEATH is going to be your destination. Such is the case. So even though this was coordinated by SeaTac, the fact that these youth run, try to take for themselves, try to swim it out, you saw the vehicle in the sea and you know so the car cannot swim. So my point is this, even though this operation was coordinated by SeaTac, under the management of SeaTac, the regular JCF was also there. So from the point in which these people try to take for themselves, and them nose of them arm. Um, the JCF was going to just pipe pie them up instinctively. So it is as if CTAC had some sorts of poor poor dog. And that poor poor dog was not any sorts of Alstation or German Shepherd. It is some sorts of Pitbull. In their natural instinct, it is to seek and destroy. So therefore, they had no sorts of choice. Even though CTAC was their justified takeaway. Now, one of the things that I noticed as it pertains to these six tools that was seized is that it seems as if they were not very well kept. That means that they're not aisle down. Most of these tools look like they were kept in a some sorts of hidden place. Some sorts are under the cellar. Some sorts are under some sorts of fall cob. So may I say to myself, being somebody that always goes to the range and knows if you have any sorts of matic, little bit of dust, little bit of dirt can cause it to stick. So I talk to some people in the JCF, some people in the court, I'm ask the people in the JCF. So when you look on them tool, yeah, how them look rusty, how them look like they're not aisle long in a very long time. Are these even usable? And I was told, yes, you will be surprised. A lot of times cases come to court in which the tool look even worse than them. Yeah? And whenever they do any sort of ballistics tests, them can F-I-R-E, they might stick after a while. However, they are still usable. Now the thing is that even if these tools were not usable and these youth were caught with these tools, they would still get that fresh 15 that would be amped up because of some sorts of rifle, high-powered rifle that is. And when you take into consideration the fact that these were used are supposed to be used in a some sorts of robbery mission, when you take into fact that these are the same group of persons that have been going all over Jamaica according to the investigation, so they probably said to themselves, it is damned if I do, damned if I don't. Because even if them did catch them, more than likely they would get some sorts of life imprisonment for the series of robbery all over Jamaica. Then again, we know Jamaica, they can fumble the ball. So therefore, what is supposed to be an open and closed case, which turned out to close caskets, we don't take any sorts of chances. So therefore, CTAC and the JCF did the right thing. Like me say, it was only sad that everybody did not lose their life. So just imagine, like I've always said, man a plan, God a wipe out. Just imagine the plans that they were taking. However, the tables turn and the JCF and CETA threw some sorts of monkey wrench in them program. 
point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it seems as if the United States is feeling itself. It seems as if the United States is showing its arrogance. And unless you've been living on the rock, you would not know that 2024 Olympics just started a couple of days ago. And when it comes to the Olympics, especially purses in our Jamaica, we like track and field specifically. We like the sprint. Specifically, we want to see, to see who is the king and queens of the Blue Ribbon event, meaning the 100 meter. Now it seems as if the United States media, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, and Noah Lyles himself has been on some sorts of campaign. And this campaign, they are subliminally dissing Jamaica, Jamaican sprinters, and they are more hyping up themselves. One of the persons in contention I am speaking about, Noah Lyles, he is the reigning world champion in at 100 meter and 200 meter. One of the best presently. However, he is not the best. The thing that most persons have a problem with is him saying that he is the fastest man in the world. And what makes it even worse, it seems as if it is a general consensus of the US media, sporting media, meaning ESPN, meaning Sports Illustrated. As a matter of fact, Sports Illustrated just did some sorts of stuff and they claim that the US is going to sweep the sprints. When we talk about the sprints, they are talking about the 100 meter, the 200 meter, the 400 meter men and women. They are speaking about the 4 by 100 meter and also the 4 by 400 meters. One of those persons that they are boosting up is Noah Lyles. And like I said, he is presently at the Olympics. He has done many of interviews and when he was asked at the Olympics opening ceremony, this is his response. Take a listen, take a look, and then I'll give my piece. What's up, Team USA? This is Noah Lyles, best man in the world, and we are out here in Paris getting ready to go on our tour of the world, introducing America to the Olympics. So let's get hyped, let's get excited, and I'll see y'all out there. Now, people, like I said, when it comes to sprint, world-class leaders, USA, Jamaica, one and two, one up, one down, vice versa. And I am not going to dispute that when we talk about the top athletes right now, based on time, the US female sprinters might have the edge. But when we talk about pedigree, proven, the Sharika, the Shellyan, we know that they are big game, big event performers. We know that them amp it up just like champs, amp it up in the world championship. It has been proven that them amp it up specifically in the Olympics and it is proven based on the amount of medals that they have won, the amount of championship, the amount of title that they have won and garnered. So therefore, we know so it is going to be some sort of next level-ish. So therefore, when we hear United States a brag and a boast, all we can say, them need to stop the captain. So when you hear Noah Lyles talk about he is the world's fastest man, people, based on the criteria that I know, the world's fastest man is the person that have the fastest time, the GOAT, meaning the world record holder, meaning Usain Bolt, 200 meter, 19.19, 100 meter, 9.58. When it comes to Noah Lyles, even... In a 2024, let me talk about 2023. Yes, he might have been the fastest performer in 2023 based on the fact that he won the 100 meter and 200 meter. However, the criteria for the world's fastest man is the person that has done the fastest time ever. That happens to be Usain Bolt. So we give Noah Lyles the fastest performer for 2023. Fast forward 2024 present. So this is the fact. He came to Jamaica at some sorts of meets and he was beaten by Oblique Seville. Oblique Seville was beaten by Kishane Thompson. 
at the national finals, national championship. Kishane Thompson ran 9.77 seconds. When he ran that 9.77 seconds, he also shut it down. So therefore, he could have gone faster. So therefore, Oblique beat him, meaning Lyles, and then Oblique got beaten by Thompson. So therefore, who is the fastest man in the world? If we check Noah Lyle's time, his personal best is 9.81. That means that if he's going to be the greatest, if he's going to be the fastest, he has a couple of barriers that he has to clear. He has to go below 9.8. He has to go below 9.7. He has to go below 9.6. And then... When he reaches below 9.58, then he can talk. Other than that, he is just capping. They need to stop the capping, point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news at the start of this video, I told you about a fishing village in which there was some unusual weather condition. And that fisherman explained everything, his experience in intricate details. Now, like I said, there's been a whole bunch of unusual weather occurrence in a Jamaica. Some people are say a tornado. However, based on some other unusual occurrence that took place in a Linston and also Kingston at the bus park in Tree to be specific. It is said, based on the expert, this is called a squall line. Now, people, there are things that are called water spout. Don't know the difference. I am going to show you a couple of experience that person saw in Linstead, in Kingston, and then I am going to give my piece. Oh, that cheese fuck up here now, dog. Big breeze. Oh, that cheese. 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 Juicy beef block up there, all that tree didn't tear down. All that way, mash up. Go to juicy beef, you would block off it too. It's been hard, you know. Normal at all. Just pass through first. This is a Jamaica I've experienced that same. Oh, poor salmon there, man. I will I hurt this. All I bag walk guy, bag walk run about black half. Mm -hmm. Now people, you and I know whenever Jamaican see anything, it's always the act of God. God has come. And based on what we've seen transpiring at Jamaica with the whole heap of crime and violence, the amount of people that are losing their lives, getting hurt, getting injured. We should not be surprised that persons are paranoid, especially when we realize that the morals and ethics in a Jamaica gone down to nothing, gone at the abyss of hell. People, I would not be surprised if God come for him world. Maybe it is best for Jamaica. Let me know what you think in the comment section. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, Please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.